Welcome back to Crying Stones Ministries, dear friends. We are on a fascinating journey exploring the vast depths of God's love and the hope He offers each one of us. Your participation and support are deeply appreciated. If you're joining us for the first time, we extend a warm invitation for you to become part of our growing community by subscribing to our channel. Now let's set the tone for today's session with a prayer. Heavenly Father, as we prepare to delve into your word, we ask that you fill our hearts with the assurance of your love and the hope of redemption through Jesus Christ. Guide us in our understanding, help us to see your hand at work in our lives, leading us from despair to hope. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. In the aftermath of sin, Adam and Eve faced a reality filled with toil and suffering, a stark contrast to the Edenic paradise they had known. Their tranquil existence had been replaced by a life of hardship and pain. Yet, in this dramatic turn of events, God did not abandon his creation to despair. He did not leave them without a glimmer of hope. As they were driven out of Eden, God made a promise. A promise that would echo throughout the ages, providing a beacon of hope for all of humanity. This promise, a prophecy in fact, is found in Genesis 3 verse 15. God, in his judgment of the serpent, speaks of enmity between the serpent and the woman, and between the serpent's offspring and hers. He speaks of the seed of the woman, who would crush the serpent's head, while the serpent would only bruise his heel. This, seed of the woman, is no ordinary reference. It is a prophetic pointer, a divine signpost pointing towards our Savior, Jesus Christ. Though shrouded in the mystery of early revelation this prophecy held a promise of hope and victory over sin. Even if they didn't fully understand the depth of its meaning, Adam and Eve in their newfound world of suffering were given a reason to hope again. So what does this promise mean for us? It's a reminder that even in our darkest moments, God's promises stand firm. It's a testament to God's unwavering commitment to his creation, his relentless pursuit of us, even when we fall. It's a prophecy that finds its ultimate fulfillment in the person and work of Jesus Christ, the true seed of the woman. This promise, this prophecy, is God's love letter to humanity, written in the pages of history and sealed by the blood of Christ. It's an assurance that no matter how far we fall, God's love reaches deeper still. Though they might not have fully grasped its meaning, Adam and Eve were given a reason to hope again and so are we. This promise finds its fulfillment on the cross, where Christ the Lamb of God willingly laid down his life for humanity. He bore the weight of our sins, our guilt, our shame on his shoulders. In his body he carried the consequences of our transgressions, the wages of our disobedience. But this was not a defeat, on the contrary, it was a victory, a victory of love over hate, of grace over judgment, of life over death. As Christ declared on the cross, it is finished. He was not expressing the end of his life but rather the completion of his mission. He had accomplished what he had come to do. He had made a way for humanity to be reconciled to God, to be restored to the relationship that was broken in the Garden of Eden, and yet, the cross was not the end. The story did not end in death, but in life. After three days in the grave, Christ rose again. He conquered death, not just for himself but for all who believe in him. His resurrection is the assurance of our own resurrection, the promise of eternal life. It is the ultimate defeat of evil, the final victory over sin and death. This is the fulfillment of the promise given in the Garden, the seed of the woman Jesus Christ has crushed the head of the serpent. He has broken the power of sin and death, setting humanity free from its bondage. He has opened the way to eternal life, to a restored relationship with God, to a future filled with hope and joy. His resurrection guarantees the defeat of evil and the restoration of all things. It assures us that God's plan for humanity is not destruction but redemption, not despair but hope, not death, but life. It proclaims the power of God's love, the triumph of His grace, the depth of His mercy. It is the fulfillment of the promise, the realization of our hope, the assurance of our salvation. The scriptures provide profound insights into the magnitude of Christ's sacrifice. They paint a picture of a love so deep, so encompassing, that it defies human comprehension. This love is not just a feeling but an action. It is a choice, a choice made by Christ Himself the Son of God to bear our sins and face death on our behalf. Consider the words of Hebrews. But we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. In this passage we glimpse the depth of Christ's love. He who was above all, chose to become less, to endure suffering, and to face death, all for our sake. 
Galatians further emphasizes this depth of love, stating, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. Here we see that Christ willingly became a curse, took our place, bore our sins, so we might be freed from the bondage of sin and death. Finally in Corinthians we read, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This verse encapsulates the magnificent exchange that took place on the cross. Christ the sinless one took upon himself our sins, so that we, the sinful, might be clothed in his righteousness. So, what does this tell us about the depth of Christ's love? It tells us that his love is sacrificial, his love is redemptive, his love is transformative. It is a love that chose to bear our sins to face death so we might live. His love, a love so immense that he chose to bear our sins and face death so we might live. Every aspect of the crucifixion from the crown of thorns to the nails in his hands echoes God's unwavering message of love. Each piercing thorn, every driven nail was a testament not only to the physical pain Jesus endured, but also the spiritual anguish he bore on our behalf. Yet he bore it willingly out of a love so profound so immense that it defies human comprehension. Imagine if you can, the creator of the universe, the author of life, willingly laying down his life for his creation. The thorns that pierced his brow, the nails that held him to the cross, these were not just instruments of torture, they were symbols, powerful reminders of the lengths God would go to redeem us, to reclaim us from the power of sin and death. The cross, that rugged piece of timber on which Jesus was crucified, stands as the ultimate symbol of this love. It is not a symbol of defeat, but of victory. Victory over sin, over death over everything that separates us from the love of God. It is a declaration of God's love for us, a love so strong that he was willing to give his only son, so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Let's pause to consider this. God didn't sit idly by, watching us struggle with sin and its consequences. He didn't abandon us to our fate. Instead, he stepped into history, into human flesh, and took upon himself the punishment we deserved. He bore our sins, our sorrows, our guilt, and our shame, and he nailed them to the cross. This is the message of the cross. It is a message of love, of sacrifice, of redemption. It is a message of hope for a world lost in sin. It is a message that says, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, God loves you. He loves you so much that he gave his only son for you. This is the assurance of love and redemption we find in Christ's sacrifice. Jesus, the creator of all, chose to step into our world, a world marked by pain, sorrow, and temptation. He was born in the humblest of circumstances, yet his birth heralded hope for all of humanity. Throughout his life, Jesus experienced the full range of human emotions and challenges, yet he remained without sin, a beacon of perfection amidst a sea of imperfection. His life was a testament to his love for us, a love so profound that he willingly faced the harshest trials and temptations. He was tempted in the desert, yet he did not yield. He was betrayed by one of his own, yet he forgave. He was condemned by the very people he came to save, yet he loved them still. Jesus' life was not only about teaching and healing, but also about demonstrating the power of God's love in overcoming evil. In every temptation he faced, Jesus triumphed, proving that the power of love is stronger than the lure of sin. His victory over evil was not just for his own sake but for ours. Through his triumph, he showed us that we too can overcome, that we too can choose love over sin. His ultimate victory however came at the cross. The cross, a symbol of shame and defeat, was transformed into a symbol of victory and love. Jesus' death on the cross was not a defeat but a triumph, a triumph over sin, over death, over Satan. He bore our sins, he faced our death, and he defeated our enemy. His resurrection sealed this victory, offering us the promise of life, hope, and redemption. His victory over evil is our victory, a victory won out of his immense love for us. His life and death on the cross answer Satan's charges and demonstrate his ultimate victory over evil, all out of love for us. Dear friends, as we reflect on the cross and what Christ accomplished, let us hold on to this powerful reason to hope. The cross, a symbol of pain and sacrifice, now stands as a beacon of God's infinite love and his triumph over evil. In the face of life's trials and tribulations we must remember that we are cherished beyond measure by a God who has already claimed victory for us. The story of redemption, from the Garden of Eden to the cross at Calvary, is a testament to God's unwavering love for humanity. 
It's a love so profound that God himself chose to bear our sins, endure our pain and face death, so that we might live. It's a love that broke the chains of sin and death, offering us a promise of eternal life. As we journey through the Bible we discover the depth of God's love and the hope he offers each one of us. The story of Jesus, the seed of the woman is a beautiful reminder of God's promise of redemption. His life, death and resurrection demonstrate his ultimate victory over evil, all out of love for us. In the face of our own struggles let us remember this victory, let us remember the promise of hope, the assurance of love and the redemption we find in Christ's sacrifice. As we navigate through the storms of life, let us cling to this beacon of hope, for it is in Christ that we find our strength, our peace, and our salvation. Thank you for joining us today. We invite you to come back tomorrow, Thursday, April 4th, 2024, as we continue to explore the riches of God's Word together. Remember, each day brings a new opportunity to delve deeper into the Bible, to strengthen our faith and to grow closer to our Savior. So let's keep this journey going. Subscribe to Crying Stones Ministries like this video and share it with your friends and loved ones. Remember you're not alone on this journey. We're here walking alongside you exploring the Bible and discovering the depth of God's love together.